You may be seated. You may be seated. God is a good God. I said, God is a good God. This is fine, some man. I said, God is a good God. The old flick your Leslie switch, son. Thank you. You may not be able to see what the Lord has done for me, but the Lord is blessing me. See, this is how I test to see how old they were. That's old school, so the Lord's blessing me right now. Look at somebody and tell them, if you want to see a miracle, just look at me. And don't, and don't preach. Preach me till I tell you I'm a different kind of preacher, though. I ain't into all of that, so catch me when you catch me. Most people, and I love music, so don't take me wrong, I love all of that. But most people that need it are per performers. They don't have no oil. They may have a drip, but they ain't got no oil. You know what that is? I'm te teaching my church a series right now on talents, anointings, and gifts. The T-A-G means tag, you're it, because most folk that we give the mic to forgot when they really had it, now they're playing a game because they're trying to become it. But when peace like a river, I'm talking to a certain group, attendeth my way when sorrows like sea billows roll whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say it is well it is well with my soul now I had a hard time getting here I heard it don't matter who said it. Somebody said I announced in my church I wasn't coming. That was a lie. I announced in my church that I'm normally here with you whenever you call, even on a Sunday morning. But you were kind enough because you know I'm in a place of pastoring where I don't want to leave my children to babysitters. Can't get no help. But I was at the airport on time. This is prophetic. They don't know it because I stopped all the music. People think I done killed the anointing or something. But y'all should be used to me by now. I ain't getting up behind all that. I'm not getting up behind all that. Because he was called to sing, not to preach. I'm not getting up behind all that. That's just too much for me to drive his car. Old man Bishop Washington would get up, put me up behind him, and tell me, yes. Don't use my keys, pull out your own. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm not getting up behind these anointed young people with all the energy that we used to have. You and I used to preach and climb each one of these pews and keep preaching from the front row to the back. Me, you, and Nathan Simmons would be in the balcony preaching to people down here. That day is gone. Now some of you young people laughing, but we still got more energy than you. I once was young, and I confess I'm getting older, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Can I get some Bible scholars? Nor his seed begging for bread. Look at your neighbor and tell him, ain't no beggar in, in this house tonight. Tell him, only folk in need, only people in need. Never going to need so much that I start begging. But I got to the airport and was looking forward to getting here. I knew I probably, Dr. Michelle, probably would not have made it because normally when I'm going somewhere, the Lord gives me a preview of the sermon. 
I didn't have one. Got to the airport, got me a Wendy's single. Y'all don't eat on the run? It's not that I don't eat healthy, but ain't nothing healthy in the airport, okay? Eating on the run is a three-hour flight. Have to come straight to the house of God, so I was dressed. Here's a prophecy for you. Know where I'm going. Ticket paid for. Door open, but ain't going nowhere. On time, well packed, door completely open, and in the midst of number one, zone one, come board, another voice trumps that voice and says, trip cancel. I slowly began to eat my fries now because I was rushing. Because fries get cold quick. Y'all just ain't human. I'm like, ain't nothing like a bad group of french fries. Huh? So I took my focus off of the burger because I didn't want no more meat and I put it on the fries. And I sat there and I called the necessary parties and they called your office. And while they were speaking, because I knew the old you, you, you are getting much better as a man of God. <laughs> because I said, call him and tell him I can't make it. I didn't want to call him and hear him say, blah, blah, blah. the Lord, blah, blah, blah. catch another flight. I, I just didn't feel like going through the back and forth that we've been going through for 32 years. I don't want to go through that. I'm saving our friendship. We're getting old. So I let them talk back and forth while I checked other flights because I knew you. Another prophetic word. If it ain't your time, stop trying to make something happen. I don't hear nobody that was never supposed to Stop trying to get somewhere before your time. Even if you're packed, paid for, at the door and it's open. Listen, I got so confused. And man, you got to upgrade your phone. You don't have FaceTime. Do something. Uh, please, because it was urgent, and I'm trying to reach you face to face. You harder to see than God. What happens? <laughs> what happens is I call you and you answer. It's all prophetic. I can't see you, but I called you. See, somebody, the mere fact that you wouldn't answer me face to face did not stop me from still trying to reach you. Now, now, now this is a prophetic summit, but some of y'all not here for the summit. You're here because you're a crack addict for prophecy. And we got enough dealers to supply you. I just won't be one tonight. And some of y'all that call yourself prophets ain't never been licensed nor ordained. Don't have a church or a church or more pastor. I'm going to address that in a minute. You sit right there. Hold on. If you don't address it, we going to hell. Giving people a chance that God is not giving a change. The only difference in chance and change is the letter C needs to be a G. 
Don't lay hands on me to get me delivered from cracking you a crackhead. If what's in you can help me, the question is, why isn't it helping you? Don't get high. I heard three people. He going to prophesy about seven people tonight. You lying. If I tell you something, you hold on to it here. Because I'm prophesying now. Calling your name is a word of knowledge. That's not prophecy. Calling your address, that's just extra fun. Because if I give you a check for a million dollars and I have it in the bank, but your name ain't written on that check, you excited, but you can't cash it. So some people rather hear their name but get no check. I'd rather get the check and then tell you you forgot my name. You follow? I'm, I'm more excited. Not that you call my name. I've been knowing my name since I was one. Door open. You didn't answer face to face. You answered. I was so sensitive to your prophetic summit. That I asked God, I'm going to call the leader. I'm not going to call Laura. I'm not going to call anyone else. I'm going to call him till I get him. And I'm going to do something to see whether he understands the day we're living in. I'm going to tell him it's okay if I don't show up. I'm good. I'm living in my prop, prop, prophecies. There was a day we stayed on the road because we couldn't go home. Right, right. Rent wasn't paid. Yeah. Work, work, sir. Now the prophecy is fulfilled. We can go home. Yes, sir. And, and just stay home. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Catch up on Ozark on Netflix. Yes, Don't watch it. It's for crazy prophets only. And you kept saying, no, man, I want you to get on the flight. You know, come here in the morning. Then I knew I wasn't coming. It wasn't your fault because the only airline that was coming here that wasn't booked was Southwest. Y'all don't care what it took me to get here? That's why I'm not prophesying to none of y'all. Because y'all going to stop pimping the preachers. And you don't know the demons we fight after we finish prophesying all y'all. I'm done with that. I am through. People think I'm playing, but I'm so serious. I'm done. I, 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 you wouldn't let me go. Now, you know names that we can't mention that's asked me to come in when they said Southwest. What was my answer? No. Big names. What was my answer? I don't even care what the honorarium was. What was my answer? No. Because it's not about money. It's about how they value you. Southwest ain't got no food. The seats are this tiny. See, some of you don't know. You know why? You don't fly Southwest. Stand up, prophet. It's not about your size, but I'm using you. I sat near someone larger than you flying here in Southwest. Do you understand how uncomfortable I was for two hours and 58 minutes? And when I touched them, which I couldn't help but touch them, they're staring me down like, why are you touching me? I'm not touching you. You're evading. you I paid for a whole seat. <laughs> See how some of you can't laugh? This is not, this is not God. I... This is more than God because when you love your assignment and love the person that's bringing you, you make sacrifices for people that you don't make for other people 
simply because the difficulty told me there was an urgency to be here. Now, I don't know who the person is. I do not. But someone is important enough to God that I'm here because I tried out of friendship. I said, man, listen. Save your money. Preach again. I'll get on the phone. And I'll tell them. Let me talk like no joke. And I'll tell them, man, that I, I just can't make it, Sherman. What you want, man, is Southwest. How do I look? Getting off of a plane with no first class. Now, some of you women looking funny. If it's ministry, you shouldn't be thinking about it. When you women got asked out to sin, did you go to a motel? No, no. Look at me now and shake your head. Or did you ask him, where are we going? Is it a suite? You paying for my plane ticket? So why sin has to have classiness and salvation stay on discount? I'm here, don't change too much, because something is critical. I'm almost finished with my time. I'm going to read and just let you go because I heard you because I follow people I love. I heard you on your Bible study. Wednesday pass. I was late going into mine. Stuck hearing you elaborate on what true prophecy was. And I was excited with the quality of your content. I wish I had 10 folk talking to me just for 35 more minutes. Just talk to me, I promise you. One thing you said that is true, which is the reason why I'm not going to do a lot of personal prophecy. You said it. God made you say it. You said it before your summit, which means it had to be a prelude to what we were going to experience. Too many people come on a conference and do their best. They just never do his will. Look how y'all don't clap. A lot of people display their best but never display God's will. Bring the best preachers, best singers, and nothing God wanted to get accomplished gets accomplished. If I'm right about it, 10 people say, talk on, Dr. Hall, talk on. You said most of what's being displayed is witchcraft. Did that come out of your mouth? All right. You began to explain the reason and what prophecy is to exalt, edify, and comfort, and you broke down each one of those. You said, because folk can tell you your name and things and that and the other or tell you who you sent with and what number that is not prophecy. That's somebody flaunting their knowledge. Y'all don't want to talk tonight? Don't let the mask be a muzzle. If you can breathe through it, you can talk through it. I agree. Pastor Darius, my problem tonight that I have to fix, and I'm going to read it for three folk who will push me and will be blessed beyond normal, and that's this. Witchcraft would have never, ever been on display in church if preachers weren't desperate. We brought someone who could do their best. 
and nothing that God showed us was accomplished. We've made a lot of witches famous. Musical witches, singing witches, warlocks, pre preaching bishop witches. We did it. That's right. That's right. Made them rich and famous. And this is, no pun intended, I need three people that are bold because I'm prophetic. And then y'all started bringing the deeper gifts over from other countries. Hey, Tasha, don't look at me. You know I ain't scared, boo. I've been doing this almost 40 years. I know a fake when I see one, but I don't have to expose them. Then people started going crazy. But this is where... You and I should get on a Zoom one day. We've never done it. Something. I, I don't do it as much anymore. And this is what I'm going to lay out here now. All right. And to those who respond, I know you're here for the right reason. Those who don't, I know you may think you're here for the right reason. Now you're a little frustrated because the candy man didn't bring no candy. I could have got up behind my son singing, that's my son and daughter. Unless they say they not. You steal my son and daughters? Oh, okay. I want to make sure that y'all ain't a part of what I'm talking about. Y'all still text me when you have my number and need help, do you? Oh, okay. Well, listen. I could easily roll that anointing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. And all of us did our best. Yeah. Right. Oh, oh. While 80% leave here with a good feeling but no change. And for five nights, we hear our name called. Six nights, we get to relearn our own phone numbers. Eight nights, we get to hear we get married for the fifth time. Y'all won't talk about it? Because the first one you married was God. You just didn't change. You wanted somebody to love you the way you were. See how quiet it got? Well, uh, I know it sounds like I'm ruining things, but I promise that we're going to pull out of this alive. The way we know the difference in the witch, warlock, and the preacher. Some of y'all don't want to know because you know which one you are, huh? Then these new improved kingdom witches got nerve to look you in your face like you ain't scared. Y'all know, right? You know right now hell is your home, don't you? We ain't afraid of hell because ain't nobody preaching it. And to all the preachers that won't, they going. Because it's our job. When the prophetic is stronger than scripture. Look how quiet it got now. We can go home. When the person knows your name but not Jesus' name. When the person. See how quiet it got. Folk ducking, demons walking out. You still here. They gone. That's why you like what? Because they left. So God will show you 50 people's names and bank account, but won't point you to him in a text. Now, let me apologize to the 10 or 20 of you who actually love Prophet Hall, who stand up for me, who invited guests and said, this is a true man of God. They didn't lie to you because some of your guests mad. He said, they ain't going to prophesy. I came here to be prophesied to. See, y'all done jacked these people up and you done made them mad and they wish they didn't come out here. Like two over here between row one and four. 
One in row one and one in row four. See, that's how strong my gift is. If you got a church and your own pastor don't do it, don't get mad when I don't do it. Yeah, I said row one and row four. It's not good that the church has not done a great job at making people want to rush to church to hear the word of God. Because heaven and earth, I need 10, shall pass away but my word. Then he said, prophecy shall fail. Tongues shall cease. But the word of God. See how folk raised in church ain't saying amen? Because they no longer raised in church. Church is raising them. That's how they pay their bills. What if they want no Facebook, no social media, and no appointments? I wonder how some of you would live. You still know how to work? Do you still qualify for a job? Is your credit straight? See, this is prophecy. Why does it qualify? Because it's edifying. None of the three qualifications was excitement. To exalt. I'm about to read. To edify. And to comfort, which means you only qualify if you're not exalted and being held back, been discredited, need to be edified. I don't hear me. Been made and been mistreated and need to be comforted. So if you don't live with these three emotions, why do you need prophecy tonight? Oh, I'm good. Then you don't need prophecy. I'm blessed and highly favored. Then you don't need prophecy. I don't ever want to get married. Then you don't need prophecy. I'm good. I don't care about money like other people. Then you don't need prophecy. What you need to be encouraged about? Now, you that are standing, it's not that you that are not standing are demonic or anything, but you that are standing are so mature, you're saying, I'd rather hear this right now. Because the other stuff is destroying churches. The Bible, the Onsiban, the Bible says, before one jot or tittle shall be taken out of my word. I will get rid of heaven and earth. That's the book. That's the book. You that claim to be prophetic, get in your Bibles. Because we're in the days when false prophets have come. And they only make money off of you that don't know the Bible. They take advantage of your uh, inability to know the text. And we that know the text, they don't prophesy to us. They just be like, I sense a funny spirit over here. No, you sense you busted. Prophesy over here and we'll talk about it. I, man of God, I see you lonely. That ain't me. He must be talking to Sherman Allen because that ain't me. We got to stop letting them error and act like it's okay. It's not okay. On that note, I'm shifting. I'm done. Stand up again. You sat near me on Southwest. That was my imagination. Hold these minute for me. Prophetically, I want to say when I brought up Southwest and the person who sat near me, 
invading my space. Your anointing is so big, it's invading my space. It is hard for you to be fathered because of the hypocrisy that is going on uh -uh, over there in the first row. He prophesied, why not over here? I told you. Now try the witch witchcraft thing one more time. That's witchcraft when you think you can control the climate of what God is doing. And the job of prophets is not just to see for you, but to see through you. I want to give you something that you should never forget. Even though I am not your, uh, as these names come along, kingdom father, spiritual father, whatever all these words are. I, I don't prophesy to people unless God shows me their heart. I don't care if you do or don't, if you're doing something erroneous right now in your life. It does not discredit who God has called you to be. Can't get y'all to talk over here. I'm almost done. But if there's any error in your life, it's because of who was in your life that didn't do their job. And now you're hanging out with people who love you, but they got the same problems. So they make you comfortable in your space. I'm not going to die, hopefully. I don't know about that. I am not dying for you to get my place. I'm Elijah. I'm ascending to something different. But God has given me the privilege, which I have not used yet, that he gave to Elijah to choose Elisha. Your gift is pure. It's strong. But let me tell you what the flight attendant said to me after he apologized, the lead flight attendant for me being uncomfortable for two hours and 58 minutes. He said, some people, and this is for you, and you can get to talk to me later about it, should be courteous enough to just pay for two seats. Bishop. Yes, sir. When you know where you're sitting is too small. Y'all don't want, is he prophesying? Ask him. then the reason why you're about to be released by the summer and more to be a different type of prophet is you paid a bigger price. The secret curse that's hid within the fiber of your family, it's going to be destroyed between now and the end of spring because God says this will not be immediate. This is years of hidden agenda. And you had to be the target of Satan's attack. That's why your flight was canceled. Now I ain't sure if Tasha would have still came tonight. But you had to be here. You hear me? You're going to go to places people are not going to believe you because you won't even look like a prophet. You're, you're going to be so versatile you will know when to be churchy and when to be secular. Because you're going to be a prophet not just to a church, to the world. Are y'all jealous or are you happy? Now, when you get home while it's winter, start looking for your new place to live. God said, tell him the rule is this. He must be careful who he let live with him. Mm. 
<clears throat> Your eyes have not seen. For the hundreds and thousands of people you have prophesied to that forgot and didn't return a thank you. It's like a car salesman. God's about to give it to you on the back end. Now, I don't touch people, especially during COVID. But if I can do this, will you allow me? All right, good. I'm glad that you trust me. Because I'm at the age right now, sir. Well, all the folk that I knew had it purely that don't now, I don't even talk to them and they don't talk to me because they know I see through them. I'm tired of anointed failures. And I stress that word again, anointed to fail. And God lets them keep their anointing because there's no scripture about losing it. But remember this scripture because you're a Bible man. Satan, thou was the anointed cherub. The word anointing in its pure form means set apart. Not special gifts. Not special heights of talent. I'm anointing you like I do when I consecrate my bishops and I've only done one in all my, no two now. All my pastors had to wait 15 years before they even became overseers. Am I right, Darius? They had to wait 17 to even become a bishop. I've been a prophet all my life. They ain't never gave me no anniversary. But they bring us to raise all their anniversary money. You know, that's unfair, ain't it? You will no longer be pimped after the spring. After the spring, when the season changes, so shall you. You have no options. So when people ask you why you changed, because Prophet Hope prophesied, tell them God spoke to me. Forget Prophet Hope, God spoke to me. You're not going to have a boring life. You're still going to make some mistakes because you're human. Just don't make those mistakes make you comfortable enough to become the mistake. When I lay hands on this prophet, what's your last name? Garrison. Garrison. When I lay hands on this prophet, I want all of you that are not jealous that someone else is going higher to start praising God for this man who will do great work, Samashia, in the name of Jesus. I don't hear anybody. You don't need music. Come on, we're going to get it. You may be seated. It came and it left, but I thought it was McBride. It like came and left. Is there a McBride in here? Is that your real name, former name, married name? Let me, um, let me quickly do this. Woman in the orange with the jeans. Come here. Yeah. Now, because I called you, it may make you feel like at least I know I wasn't the one in the front row. God sent you here because your season to become, hear what I'm saying, what he and I are, prophetic, 
is about to enter you, but God said, tell her, I will no longer speak to her just through dreams. I will speak to her with her eyes wide open. I'll tell you, no, you can't catch from back there. With your eyes wide open, you are, you're really a unusual miracle that you were able to break through to Jesus Christ against all odds. Because through you, your entire immediate family will get to know Christ. The Christ that they fight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm almost there. I'm almost there. You married? God said, I, God said, when she talks to me tonight, ask her to stop taking me back and forth. Does she want me to fix it or not? The Batisili Kupakasa. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to guide you to the decision because you want God's will, but it is not God who forces his will on anyone. When it comes to some of the things you've experienced, you have a say so. Now, I will tell you this. This gentleman still has great potential to be the man of God that he was born to be. And because you see that, you've held on. The issue is he can't see it. I thought y'all were concerned about people. Y'all looking like, whoo, yeah, no, no, all you that are prophetic, you be like, yes, Lord, glory. Like your grandmama, glory be to God. You know, y'all don't have that. Y'all got the stair ministry. But back in the old church, you be like, glory be to God, baby, receive it. God says, tell her I'm going to change her home address. Tell her I'm still going to make her a great entrepreneur, but of three businesses. Tell her. And there's a woman God wants to bless because she's been praying for you on the down low, especially when I mention your marriage. I'm going to point to, I don't know if you know her, but if she even looks like she'll run up front, she's going to get a new house too. Lady with the long dress on, right? Talking to you, right? Can't see through the mask. Do you know her? How well? Do you know her? Uh, did y'all come here together? Or y'all met each other, said come to church? Um, you should be able to tell her, and hear me well, how people can bounce back from a bad marriage. Now, respectfully, you are one of the ones I was talking about. Not that you don't believe, but it's so much fake that is going on. You on the fence with all of this prophecy. Like you done. So I've been sent to revitalize your hope. Because God says when I bless her, I'm going to re-bless you. I don't hear them, I'm going to re-bless you. And God said you will never tell him you don't need a husband because the husband needs you. You're not dating, are you? I'm not telling you who your husband is, but don't go blind to another color. Because another color's been looking at you for a couple of months, and I'm trying to help you. Okay, there you go. All right, I want to lay hands on you. Glory, hallelujah. You are my sheep plant seed. You're going to need a vacation out of the country. You'll have enough money to do it. Just go somewhere you like. See the water like you do. Go to a country that your family may be from. Just, just a Mahamasika. And, and lay back and let the angels of the Lord just 
just saturate you. Hallelujah. You're going to be okay. You told God, I can't go another year. You won't have to. God is in your corner. I wish I had some concerned saints. When I lay hands on this sister, you that know what a Shabbat praise is and know how to clap, do it now in the name of Jesus. You may be seated. You may be seated. Can you go sit up there for a little while? Because I need some prayer warrior. Can you go sit in that chair? How old are you? Stand up, baby. That's what's wrong with this generation. Lord, help them. You tall. You've been to college? You're, you're about to graduate. Oh, in May? I, while I was talking to the young lady, the Lord kept flashing something over your head, right? And, and this is what he said for me to tell you. He said, number one, tell her, I need to replace her secret sorrowful heart. Tell her she can't be happy and sad at the same time. God has given no apologies or reasons why he took who he took. Because he says he belonged to me. There are no answers. You will never have them. You knew that when you signed up to say yes, Lord. No man lives forever. The whole kingdom message is to live is Christ. What you did not hear is when this man took his last breath, he said, have somebody tell my wife I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I never got a chance to say it the correct way. Now, dear, you can't be happy and sad at the same time. You're going to be the wealthiest person in your family. The Lord said, the first reason why I was coming to you was tell you that if you jump or scream, he was going to pay off all the student loans, student debt. God said, you will have no debt. I don't hear nobody giving God glory up in this house with the fruit of your lips. And when I am weak, then am I strong for history is made perfect in weakness. You need to become her strength. Everybody want to preach in things. Your ministry is different. Don't even let them prophesy you're going to preach. And anyone that do it, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. 
because there's a ministry called government and helps everybody can preach somebody got to be able to get a loan somebody got to have a business idea somebody has to have offices where Christians can be employed hallelujah I just want you to come hug her just for about 10 seconds and then I'm going to read my little scripture and I'm getting back on southwest Are y'all praising God for them or you're not? No, that's weak. Are you praising God for them? They lost someone special. What's your last name? Yes? I want you to study, even if it's on your own, finances. I'm sure you know why. Because sometimes what we don't finish, we must. You would have been very rich without all this church stuff. Helping others make more money than you. If you would have just completed the task. Now, there's scripture, baby, and I normally don't touch people. I'm serious. Where it says, God redeemed the time. You're going to need to read about money because money's about to hunt you down. And if you don't know about it, it's going to bring bad publicity. You know about that. Most people that make money get in trouble because they don't understand money. So they lose everything. The IRS, bad credit because they have no respect for money. All right. Most people don't even have a financial advisor who they pay the right amount to keep them secure. I think you got it. Yep. You're going to be the happiest little fine midget I've ever seen. Did Prophet Hall just hit on that girl? No, you're about to. <laughs> I was getting sensitive because she crying. So I had to break the monotony because I can't take it. When people have a pure cry, it breaks me. All the fake this, it don't move me at all. But when you just start melting in the presence of God, it changes the whole atmosphere. You're going to live, you're going to have to live in two states. So get ready to make enough money so that when you're upset, you go home again. Like you leave home and you go home. Don't go through and find friends that understand you. Just go home. That's called peace. The other thing is called numbing you company numbs reality. <laughs> You're going to make a lot of money. Now, this ain't God, like Paul said in the Bible, this is me. If you're going to make the money that I see, I need you to send me a donation. Oh, I ain't laughing, Tasha, because you owe me a lot of money too. I don't want to find out you on the cover of a major magazine smiling saying God did it. And forget who God used. <laughs> the same way people have used you to make the money and you didn't get money, don't let me make you a millionaire and you forget me. Now I didn't ask for none of your money, did I? Right, but your money. I didn't ask for none of your money either, did I? Did I ask for any of your money? No, but your money. Because you're going to make a lot of it. Best way to not go to jail is to make charitable donations. He gives seed to the sower. 
See, y'all think I don't know what I'm talking about. Your money can't make me what I already am. I decree that you will become for the next three years, this is not even a real title, but the prophetess of prosperity. When I say that, God will line you up with people that only have ideas and foolishness you will avoid. You will no longer be a charity to the broke. A cushion for the hurt. It is time for you to go into your season. Focused. Faithful. Fearless. The greatest word that's going to keep you rich after these next few months is the word no. A word that you don't practice very well. Can you do this for me? No. No. So get ready. The reason why I'm touching your hands because that's where money doesn't come to the head. It comes to the hands. I touch their heads for prophecy. Your hands to receive. When I tell everyone to praise God for her, you that are tired of being empty and ready to know what it is to be full, you got 30 seconds of your greatest, loudest praise. Do it now in the name of Jesus. seated get a bible don't get bored i didn't lie i stopped at four never got to seven i want you to look at your neighbor i do this everywhere you that are watching online the great 1403 i love y'all back home you will all look at a neighbor say these words if they don't get excited it's because they're not prophetic just look to the left and right and say you're next now, if they don't understand what you're saying, next for what? What you mean? You're next. Just because I didn't call you out don't mean he's not calling you up. At the end of the day, it's God. All by himself. Am I right about it? What's your first name behind the black mask? Who? Bartina. Spell it. What's your last name? Barker. All right, you can pull your mask up. I don't know why. I looked in the corner, in your corner, and I, maybe I'm just crazy. The box of tissue behind you looks like a radio. That box of tissue behind you looks like a transmitter. Don't take this wrong, but God said if she's to praise me tonight the right way, I'll make her as known as Howard Stern. God says... And he's going to regret he left. Y'all ain't talking. God said he's going to regret every bit of it. That's five. I won't go to seven. Are y'all jealous or are you happy for people? I hear the word syndication. You might even get a sit down with Steve Harvey to discuss how to tweak your idea. Now what I'm telling you right now is worth three million dollars. I know what it's worth. Don't take her out of here. Y'all leave her right there now. The old school say, stay in where the power is. Stay where the power is.
Now, for the rest of you that think the prophetic is stronger than the scripture, we're about to find out. I love what he uses me to do to help others, but I love this Bible in a way that people could never understand. I used to try to prove that it was wrong. See, you've been saved since three or preaching since three. I grew up in a church where I didn't want to serve that God that kept us on section eight. See, y'all lie to God. I don't lie. I told him. I didn't want to meet you because of the way they represented you and you took and you take a long time to do simple things when you made everything in a week. See, nobody's talking. God ain't going to never kill you for being truthful. He going to kill you for being disrespectful. But the old mothers did tell us, I only going to need about 25 minutes, that he may not come when we want him. Five folk from the old school jump up and shout, but he's right on time. He's always. Then they told us, nobody told me that the road would be easy. But I don't believe that he's brought us this far. To leave us some through the water. Yes, sir. Some through the flood. Some through great trials. But all through the blood. Hallelujah. I want to read some familiar scriptures. And prophetically tell you what God has to say within the last fleeting moments of my stay here. Now, I am going to beseech, which is borderline begging, eight of you to talk to me for the hundreds who won't. Because I'm from Brownsville, and when it's quiet, I think somebody about to get shot. When it's quiet in the hood, something ain't right. Yeah, Hallelujah. This ain't God, this me. I want to be on that radio show too. Interview me. I got some real stuff to say. Don't ask me about what does it feel like to be a prophet. Ask me what did it feel like to be a broke prophet when I was a rich drug dealer. Ask me those kind of questions. Don't ask me how does it feel to be a great man of God and all the women chase you. Ask me how did it feel to be a great man of God and lost a woman I had. Ask the questions that people don't want to talk about. Psalm 23. Verse 1 and 2. Psalm 23. You don't have to stand, just understand. We're not starting over. Forget the church stuff. Psalm 23. Verse 1 and verse 2. You've heard it before, but hopefully I can say something you've never heard and bring a prophetic twist to all of this. And please, somebody, the seven of you, eight of you, push me. The Lord is my shepherd. What this actually means for the eight people who scream is he's responsible. What I could say to cause trouble, but I won't. Stop following leaders who are irresponsible. Stop marrying irresponsibly. Stop spending money irresponsibly. Can I get eight honest people to admit you've been a little irresponsible? I have. Picture if you blessed now and you've been irresponsible, how much more blessed you would have been. Come on, think about it. No, don't get mad. Just think about it. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want.
what it reads in the original canon, I want to condense it. I thought I had seven, but y'all lied, is when you become responsible, you shall not want. Most of the things you want is because you spent what you had on something else irresponsibly. You didn't need that type of house right now. You didn't need the red bottoms and yellow bottoms right now. You didn't need a bundle of hair right now. You did not need. Do I have people talking? Now, believe it or not, that's not my key verse. The key verse is verse two. He maketh me. Now, here's for three folk that's learning the Bible, because I'm not calling your name. I'm showing you God's will and scream on this. He's responsible. And when he wants you to be responsible, there are some things he must make you do. When he has to make, that means who he's making won't do it on their own so in order for God to put us in a place of wealth in the future I don't see nobody jumping he has to take everything you have now so that you are so needful you start talking to him like you should why do hurt folk have hurt folk for friends Why is there a divorced wife crew? Why do everybody know each other through the same problem? How are we friends because we experience the same issues? I need friends that's in the better direction than I am. Who will tell me, Negro, you were stupid, you made a mistake, and you need to change and man up and make better decisions. Look at somebody, talk to them through the mask, tell them, I wish I had that person in my life. I wish I had that person in my life. You can't brag and tell somebody I've made millions and have nothing. You can't do that. That sounds ignorant. I've had great homes and now you're foreclosed. Don't don't talk about victory on the back end, I mean the front end, and defeat is where you're living. Because now you're making it seem like God took it all and you did nothing wrong. I'll be transparent for four of you who want to be blessed like me and better. Some of the things that I'm experiencing, I caused. And then had the nerve to be like, Lord, where were you? You could have stopped me. God said, hold on now. I don't control lives. I lead them. Now all of you that are quickening and waving and not talking, something's wrong with you. That's how your marriage failed. You wanted to touch but never talked. And black people are famous at touching. Then when we talk and don't touch, the conversation don't excite you. I want somebody that will talk to me. And he walks with me. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Then he leadeth me beside some calm stuff. Some of you ain't had about the Bible no more because you got caught up somewhere. But when I grew up and we were past the children, we had to have the longest Easter speech. We had to know all the scriptures at one. Lord, my shepherd, I tell not want. Making me lie down green pastures. We skipped words, but we knew the scriptures. But y'all, all y'all know is lyrics. And your stuff only selling because you don't have his name in them words no more. When I grew up, his name was in everything. Jesus on the main line. 
Have you tried Jesus? Jesus is the answer. If you call Jesus. Everything got Lord in it. And many shall say, Lord, Lord. And I shall say, depart. He leadeth me beside still waters. Of course, we know that there's a few more verses and we're all famous with, yea, though I walk, but I don't need any of those verses. I need these two with focus on, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Now, from there, let's go to Mark 6 and you'll see where I'm going. And I'm about to holler and get out of here. Mark 6, verse 35. Mark 6, verse 35. Hey Amen. Push me. Mark 6, verse 35. And I'll tell you this now to see if a preacher will jump up and push me. I'm about to read a true story of Jesus, who's featured in Psalms 23, making actual people sit down in green pastures. Figured I'd cut through the fluff. Chapter 23 is a formula. Mark 6 is a formula received. A lot of us know the scripture, we just won't live it. I know the Bible, you just don't know the author. Because if you feared who wrote it, you would do your best to live it, I promise you. Let me prove the text. Mark 6, Pastor Johnson, 35. When the day was now far spent, his disciples came unto him and said, this is a desert place. Can I, can I teach this while I preach it? What they are saying is what I'm saying of some of us. And if you say amen, it will change. Lord, I admit I'm in a dry place. You can be making money, still be in the dry place. You can be married to a good person and still be personally in the dry place. I don't hear nobody talking. You can have a good job and still contemplating suicide because your soul is in a dry place. This is a desert place and now the time is far past. Which means for my two members, I don't need seven no more because five of you lied. And I got at least eight in here that call me pop, uncle, dad, and only three of you talking. Why don't y'all stop texting me? The time is far past for some of you to leave here still in a dry place. Look at somebody and tell them, when I leave here, it's about to rain. Just go on and tell them, even if you don't believe it, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable. Even if my life ain't, let the words of my mouth, oh, y'all, and the meditation of my heart. Lord, don't judge my life right now. Judge my words. Last suggestion or last request don't stand up if you ain't gonna speak up why change your posture and not change your sound when you stand up speak up and let the devil know I'm back be just like Oprah on color purple I'm alive pass them biscuits Harpo Woo, I'm back weeping may endure for a night oh, I feel good but joy. Verse 36, send them away. Y'all sit that they may go into the country round about into the villages and buy themselves bread, which then means this crowd's issue was not that they didn't have money. They weren't in a good place to use it. If, I, if I'm prophesying, see what I'm doing is I'm pausing to speak to the folk I didn't call out and you're still not talking. So tell you catch what I said. When you leave here, your problem will not be money. 
but you need God to put you in the right place to know what to do with it. The key word in the text is send them away that they may buy. Which means God is about to make you an owner, not a renter. Everything you get is going to be paid in full. Because you served him in your dry place. Some of you still need prophecy or you getting it right now? Because ain't nobody's name mentioned in this text but Jesus. You don't need him to change your name. You need him to change your lifestyle. I know what it is to live struggling, but let me see what it feels like to live a successful life. Be seated again. Next time you stand, you're on your own. Send them away into the country that they may go eat. Let them buy themselves bread because right now they have nothing to eat. They are not broke. You can't eat money. See, y'all, I'm talking to folk now. Some of you so busy making money, you have no joy because you can't eat money. He answered and said unto them, he being Jesus, give ye them to eat. Do I have a few minutes? I only need 20 of you, but I need four to talk. Apostle Bennett, what this is saying is Jesus basically on the DL rebukes who suggest he's keeping them too long. They see you see you young folk won't preach it right. They you find out in John, Philip goes to Jesus and said the hour's late. Every restaurant's about to close. You've been preaching from morning till midnight. You are long-winded. Send them home that they may eat. Then Jesus on the down low embarrasses them and says, being that you know they're hungry, why don't you feed them? Which means for three Bible scholars, it is not people that ever said they were hungry it was his disciples the folk closest to God are the ones changing how we serve God because they want to make life more comfortable for you we out early but I'm still broke now I got more hours to be broke I got more hours to be in the place that I'm being evicted from. More hours to get threatening texts from my ex. More hours. I'm not sleepy, so let me sin the rest of the evening. More hours. I have a new dog that I've been... I don't want to talk about it, but I, I have a dog. And they tell me that this particular dog called a cane corso is a puppy for, for almost 18 months. A puppy. I thought that you were a dog when you grew up. Bishop, Bishop. When you're bigger than the cage. Bishop. See, some of you think folk are great because they're big. They're popular. But they're still puppies. They have no training. And my dog, I started training her at eight weeks. She did good at eight weeks. She did good at 12 weeks. She did good at eight months. She did good at nine months. She made me proud. Sit, stay, don't go nowhere. People come around, cars go. No distraction. She obeyed me. But when she became one, this little heifer of a dog, when she became one, I didn't use the other word, baby, but this little dog decides 
she's not going to obey no more rules. Sit. All the way. Car coming. I got guests coming over. I done bragged about her. Let's see your dog. No, no. She's sleepy. Some of y'all ain't going to be blessed taking who God wants in your life around company that don't respect it. I'm telling you, it's not going to work. Look how quiet it just got. Because you are the company you keep. Even if you are different, we're going to judge you by what you present. Guilty by Stay with me, Bishop. I'm almost there. So one of the guy told me, pay him to train my dog. Because I did good, but not good enough. I took his word because he's a dog trainer. I'm a dog owner. Oh. And I took advice from dog trainers and did a fairly good job to be a dog owner. This man brought me to his place for two months, never taught my dog how to sit. Never taught my dog how to all the way. All the way mean lay down and don't move. He told me, I brought you here as a trainer to train you for this type of dog. He said, when dogs start disobeying owners, it's because owners no longer understand the dog. He told me, you got to stop yelling at her because she's only listening because you're raising your voice. You don't hear your orders. So I said, let's see you do it. He said, come here, sit. She said, I said, now listen. It's because you white. He said, oh, now the dog no colors. I said, this dog must know colors because you don't feed her. You don't walk her. You don't pick up behind her. Then he hit me for $259 with this for, for a screamer. He says, but she understands voice, sound, heart. That's right. That's right. That's right. It's terrible when the people that follow us and claim they love us, not obey us. No. My dog, every morning when I get up to go walk her, even when I want to stay in bed, I've been trained to be on her schedule. Because if not, I've got to clean up a mess she made because I'm off schedule. Bishop, Bishop, Bishop. Y'all are missing, so I got to get up. That's good, sir. And when I get there, she starts dancing in the cage. And I'd be like, you miss me? And the truth is, I'm hyping myself. She don't miss me. She want to get out the cage. Right. But she never has the same behavior when she has to go back in. So I got a question for three folk who will jump up and scream. How is it that y'all are more excited when you leave church than you are when you have to come? I'm about to get out of here because y'all ain't talking to me. Church should not feel like a cage. This should be something you look forward to. 
let me give you the scripture for my eight, 18 future millionaires. I was glad when they said unto me. Don't make me preach. Let us go. For this is the day that the Lord hath made. In about eight minutes, I'm going to church. We shall rejoice. The worst thing some of y'all could do is sit near somebody that ain't got no feelings in church. To me, they pitiful. I don't know why they want to get married. If you act like in your marriage like you do in here, you're going to Judge Judy's court every time. Sitting there lifeless talking about I'm waiting on my covering. You ain't got one. I want, I want to sell my dog. No, no, I'm not, I'm not a dog lover like y'all. I want to sell my dog. I'm looking for a good owner. Ain't going to charge him. They can even take the dog. I said it, right? And this is what the Lord said to me. And I'm hoping somebody jumped for me. He says, it's your right to sell the dog or to give the dog up for adoption. In that, you're just showing you fail. Wow. Wow. Or that you don't want the response. Because what responsibility means for three millionaires who will jump up and scream like you're crazy is time management. When you're responsible, you are no longer on your time. I'm talking to talkers. It's not my will, Lord. You can't do you and God at the same time. So for you that God loves, that he's training like a dog, he makes you lie down. He leads. He gives commands that frustrate some of us who have never had any real time for ourselves. If I'm addressing somebody, tell me, because if not, I'm just going to close and do what you want me to do. Tasha, six more minutes of reading is good to see. You know, I love you. He answered and said to him, give me. He said, give ye them to eat. And they said unto him, shall we go and buy 200 penny worth of bread and give to them? Which means even the disciples are admitting that they're not broke. Nobody's hearing the prophecy. You're not hearing it. They're admitting we ain't broke, but they're also admitting we don't care. What they just admitted was we're going to go buy for them. No, we'll buy for ourselves. Let every man be for himself. So on that note, prophetically, for three folk who will dance and look crazy but be blessed, God says, I'm about to give a huge blessing to those who were blessing others when you couldn't take care of yourself. The issue is, hey, it hurts you to help them, but your heart is so postured that every time you get a miracle, a name comes into your spirit. Let me call so-and-so. Do you need anything? Anyone that's a consistent giver is basically chosen to be a millionaire. Now you have to learn that. I'm not going to talk on it, but you need to believe that. Am I boring, y'all? Some of us would probably have a good nest egg if we didn't have such a good heart. But the Lord said, because your heart is good, I'm about to replenish everything that you've lost and you will have enough to help and not hurt. See, I'm prophesying now. I'm, I'm edifying. I'm exalting. I'm comforting. And you're still quiet. I'm tired of helping people. I'm done. Don't change your nature. Tell God to change your resources. Don't get hard. I 
would be a miserable prophet if I start thinking about everybody that used me. Who I blessed when they were nothing. Now they big acting like they don't remember. I would lose my mind. Oh, but my hope is built. I wish I had an old school church I really do. Oh, nothing less than Jesus' blood. I ain't playing with y'all in his righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but holy lean on Jesus' name, on Christ the solid. Y'all talk to your boy. Rock, I stand all of the ground. Everyone in this scripture had money. But they were not postured to purchase. Why are y'all quiet? I still ain't said nothing for you to talk back to me. I got to go back on Southwest. Y'all need to talk to me. Verse 38, about to close it. He saith unto them, how many loaves do we have? Which means, do we have anything to start with? Let me reword it for the same three folk who will jump and shout. I see you, Mike, because you know God's about to change your season. And that's this. God said, tell all of you the bread is nothing but an appetizer. We're going to put bread on the table. Oh yeah, that's just something to get you started because of the length of time it's taken the entree to be pre Give us this day. Not in the spring, not in the summer. I need it now. Y'all better talk to God while he in a good mood. I need it now. The reason why the prayer has within the fabric of the text give us this day. I wish I had my church running. Come my church be up here. Preach it, bitch. Give us this day our daily bread. Then it said, forgive us and lead us not. Is it hard not to be tempted if I don't have resources? So it says, God, if you want to help me walk away from certain things, give me enough so I can say whatever you offering, I already have. Uh, I'm going to dance. <laughs> God said to tell 50 screamers, I'm going to pay you to live right. What I'm going to do, right? Uh -oh. Hey, pray for me. He maketh me to lie down. In green patch, give us this day early bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors debt. Which means those that owe us, let us just let them keep it. So pay me enough to not be angry at who used me. And after I get out of it, lead me not back into that situation again. But deliver me from all evil. For thine is the kingdom and, and the power and the glory. How long? Look at somebody practice on their spirit and see if they get happy. Tell them I'll never be broke again after this service. When you believe it, there's a certain sound. There's a certain activity. You that are watching online, same to you. Well, I came to Jesus. I got two left. Just as I was, I was weary. I was worn. I was sad. 
but I found in him a resting place. Diamond, get up here. I'm on my way to fly. And he has made me glad. Not my money. Not my credit history. I'm glad he changed all that, but I'm more glad that he changed me. Because a wonderful change. Oh, y'all don't know no Hawkins song. Has come over me. He changed my life complete. And now I sit. No note yet. I sit at his feet to do what must be done. I'll work. That's a foreign word to some of y'all. You're allergic to that. But I'll work. Not sleep till he come. After this verse, I can tie all the loose ends. The Bible says, do we have anything? He says, how many loaves they go and see? And they said, we got five. And uh, let me hear E flat. All right. We have five. I think I'm going to be in the B flat. Then we have five and two fishes. Here's the verse, flick that switch, that I am going to braid with Psalms 23. And to you that love the Bible and love how we put it together, you scream because you like the word of God over a word from God. Five loaves, two fish. Whoever wrote this, maybe that's how they spelled it back then, but there's not two feet. You got feet. There's not, he texts me, he texts. So it's really two fish. It's not I got monies. I got money. More money. Y'all ain't talking about it, I won't talk about it. Now, Bishop, on this, tap my shoulder if it makes sense. Then let me read two paragraphs and then we'll just have quick Baptist experience and go on home. It says five and two fish. In verse 39, this is what it said. This is the orders from Jesus. He commanded them. To make all sit down. By companies where? Psalm 23. And he maketh me. I have a topic. A subject. A very rude. Uncomfortable topic but if you are mature and responsible you can handle it then I'll read and we can go to church the Lord said tell all of you you that I'm about to give a real miracle to that's been waiting years says the only thing you must do to get it sit down somewhere get yourself out the way I don't hear nobody stop telling me what to do and when to do it Come on, help God check that neighbor and tell him, sit yourself down somewhere. Sometimes before a miracle comes, you have to stop making moves. Stop holding stupid meetings going nowhere. And have a little talk with Jesus. I'm about to go to church. Tell him all about your troubles. He'll hear. I got help. Your faithful cry. He'll answer. By and by. Get a little prayer wheel turning. And all that fire burning. Just another talk with Jesus. 
I'm talking to church folk. Tragedy is a commonplace. All kinds of diseases. People are slipping away. The economy's down. Y'all don't have that kind of church, I'm sorry. People can't get enough pay. But as for me, let me hear the B flat. Yeah, okay. But as for me, I'll be there in a minute. You can leave it here. I'll shoot two guns in a minute. All I can say is thank you, Lord. Sometimes nothing moves God better than any praise in advance. Don't wait till the battle is over. Shout now. Because you know in the end we gonna win. I want you to look at somebody close or far and just tell them everything is gonna be all right. No, I don't want you to play with them tonight. But I want you to get eye contact with somebody that's going through the driest season of their life and tell your neighbor, oh, neighbor, come on, oh, no, 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 neighbor, everything. Give me some, give me, give me some gain now, sound man. I'm going to church. It's going to be all right. I want you to look at somebody and help me preach to them. Get you one member piece and tell them all you have to do tonight to get a miracle that you've been waiting so long for is sit your happy self down. Get out of the way and let Jesus do what he's blessed or great at doing. Can I get a witness tonight? Just look at a neighbor. Y'all ain't having no church. And look at them in the face and tell them all we got to do is believe God for one another. Now if the person's not talking to you, then really shift your posture and find somebody that's tired of you struggling. Tired of you worrying. Tired of you being frustrated. And tell your neighbor, by tomorrow morning, everything. Yes, Lord, I feel Jesus is going to be all right. Why don't y'all grab somebody's hand that ain't jealous and tell them back in Detroit, which is called Motown. They've got a lot of great singers like Tasha Lockhart Page uh, and like the Winans and Vicky Winans and like the Commission and like Lisa Page. But tell them one of the songs is prophetic tonight. And the words of the song is ain't no need ain't no need to worry sound man you gotta cut it up out here huh? what the night is going to bring grab them and tell them God said it'll be over I'll be there in the midst of God told me to tell you it'll be all over in the morning now tell your neighbor how uh, would you pray the Lord uh, if what God said meant the literal morning that means by 7 a.m. your whole life could change if you believe it make a joyful noise unto the Lord all ye lands come before his presence with singing uh, know ye not he is the Lord and he had made us uh, and not we ourselves uh, shake somebody else's hand and say don't get mad with me but tell them neighbor the reason why God's gonna bless you is you sat next to
to me. I am a child of God. And if anybody asks you, what's the matter with me? Tell them I'm saved. Sanctified. Holy Ghost filled. Fire baptized. on my side and I'm running come on Zion and let's have a little more church and tell your neighbor when I got here tonight I needed a miracle I sat down and digested the bread I ate the word of God but when I leave here I'm going to get a miracle Satan you should have killed me before I got here but I've got what from my grandmother just as soon as my feet struck Zion I'm gonna lay down my heavy burden put on my robe in glory shout and tell the story what is the story I made it over you ought to shake a neighbor and tell him I made it, I made it, I made it. Just grab a neighbor by the elbow and shake him with a little power and say, hey there, hey there, don't get mad with me, but tell him I'm testing your spirit. Tell him I got two words that I'm going to say in your face. And if you believe it, your life changes today. And the two words are, it's over. Whatever you're going through, whatever you're experiencing, God told me to tell you that it's over. I, I, I've got a feeling. I want to close. I want to close. Bishop, I, I'm Ashinai. Oh, he waited to the very end to touch the right button. But listen, I want to read. Thank you, sound man. You're good. I want to read. These two paragraphs. No, 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 no. Then I'm going to yell for me. The two paragraphs says, y'all stay there and talk to me. I have a major concern. And to some degree, I contributed to the concern. I'm guilty. Everyone wants to hear about the future, but no one wants to address now. Every prophecy, I wish I had three screamers. That God has spoken to you will come to pass when you change. The people that spoke it are not false prophets. You've been false recipients. Because you are responsible for your own word. Hold on. Two things left and I need louder screamers. No response, no results. So if God said you're going to be a millionaire and you give him a $10 praise, he didn't lie, your behavior did. As blessed as I am, I praise him like I'm broke every service. The money has not changed my intensity. Dance with two hurt knees. A ruptured Achilles with surgery. Heart attack, Bell's palsy. You got to stop changing it. You got to leave it where it's hot. 
the Lord informed me not to begin to address people tonight in their future, which is prophetic. Dress them in the now, which is their pathetic. It's pathetic when God tells you he's going to bring you out in 30 days and you won't praise him today. After you've been in the mess for eight years and he's counting down, telling you you only got 30 more days. And you tell him, Lord, when you do it, I'm going to praise you. This ain't no game show. This is a life of responsibility. I'm closing. Flick that switch. You have, look at me, I'm closing, a responsibility to your right now. Two, I don't hear the screamers. Prophecy is nothing, you may want to add this on your Wednesday, but God inviting you to change to get what he said. He's not speaking to your irresponsible self. He's speaking a perfect future to see will you work on your irresponsible self. Like I told the prophet, I can't remember how God spoke to him. The house you're going to live in is based upon who you let live there. Which means if you want the house, here's the rule. You don't make the rules in the lifestyle you never had. You follow the rules of who gave you the lifestyle. Look how quiet they just got. So if God gives you the money, you don't tell him what you're going to do with the money. You ask him, Lord, what is it that you want me to do? If God gives you a husband or a wife, you don't ask your girlfriend how to please him. You tell God you made him and I need you to tell me how to please him. Because any woman that can tell you how to please your man can take your man. But we'll move further. That means she has studied him better than you. And what she's basically telling you to do is sit down somewhere. Last thing and I'm done. God, Tasha, and the word now are the same word. Looking for, I knew he was going to say something stupid. He always going to say something stupid. God and the word now are actually the same. I know my man, James Double Jones, who only drives me and takes me back for sitting there saying, Unk, don't mess up now. You know, I told you I had a dog. Mm -hmm. If you spell God's name backwards, you got a dog. Right? What he's trying to tell you is if you see him in the opposite, you'll try to train him instead of him leading you. You'll have God on the leash telling him, sit, roll over, fetch me a house. We're closing, y'all. I got to go. But if you, I want to see who screams loud, especially young yes, people who want to be, but if you take the word now uh -huh. and flip it backwards, it said one. Yes, it doesn't say winning. It means I've already. So when God speaks to you now, he doesn't have to do it later. You got to praise him like it's done. Because no response, no results. I'm closing now. You ready? God is, and I'm done, he is eternal. He is, I feel like dancing, the same yesterday. Come on, today. 
and forever. And he said, I am the Lord thy God, I changeth not. If God is God, past, present, future, that means he's in what he spoke in my future while he's speaking to me in my present. That means he's already there, which means there exists. You have to make changes now to get there. And when you get there, he's going to be the same. All right, you didn't like that. They didn't like it. Let me show you how God and now is one. You ready? Somebody let me use you. Son, can I use you? You have a watch on. What time is it now? 10, yeah, yours. Yeah, central time. 1037. That's the time it is now. Okay? 1037. Look at it, man. You're helping me do this. Turn around. Don't hurt yourself. You clean too, doc. Uh, what time is it now? What time was it when I asked you? But at 1037, it's no longer now. Time has changed. But now has it. Hold on. Everybody's quiet now. Keep watching. Now God was in 1037 and he's in 1038 already in 1039 but he got to wait till 1039 gets here for us so we can call it now. Now what you're doing right now son for a screamer is you're waiting on now. And you know it's coming because you see time moving in that direction. Yes, sir. And who controls time? Yes, sir. So when God prophesies, it's already done. Now you got to let time catch up. That's good. And about time, time catches up. You can't be who you were yesterday. Now, the question is, and then we're going to praise him. Not get all of the things that I have, nor do I yet have all the things I should have had. Y'all not talking to me. Because I waited too long to change. God had to increase my wisdom I don't hear you. And my maturity. Yes, sir. And what he put before me, I'm not lying, Tasha, what he put before me back in 1995 at a church called Free Gospel Deliverance Church, Bishop Ralph E. Green, 4201 Marlboro Pike, right? Uh, phone number 301-420-9300. I don't know how I'm remembering all this, but that's in 95. That's crazy. Give me the lottery numbers. No, let me... God won't do that for me because, you know, I play it now. Now, yes, sir. You and me both. Yes, sir. Now, hear me. Wait, Bishop. The Lord told me, Todd, I have this, that, and the other for you. I want you to live a life of abundance and be able to give, looking to receive no more. I praised him that year. Jump, shout, fell out because everybody gets excited on the initial All right, you that ain't talking, you are dismissed. And I went through. I fell out and everything because I know how to respond. Yes, sir. My response determines results. So I don't act deep. Yes, Lord. No, I just cut the food. You're going to give me what I want plus more? I'm a wagon dog, tail dog. I'm a Russian tap on the clock. Then the Lord told me, which blew my mind, and 18 folks should scream loud. He said, and I'm going to give it to you while you live in Rome. I said, what? What? Yes, sir. What, Bishop? The Scooby-Doo in me came out. What, Bishop? See, some of you don't think God talks. He said, 
I'm one, two, three, four, five, six. Somebody in the six row is like, I don't believe that. Then sit down. Why are you still standing? He said, I'm going to give this to you while you live in Rome. Yes, sir. Because I don't bless folk for living holy. That's your reasonable service. That's the book. That's the book. You don't get a better husband because you a virgin. Right. Ask certain people. Because you fasted for 40 days? Ask somebody. You're supposed to live right because you love him. Not because you're pimping him. You love him. I'm about to close this. You're going to be shocked. So I said, if you're going to give it to me and I ain't got to like really change, let it come on. And it came too. No, no, it came. Miracle house, no money down, had to pay the mortgage, paid it off in seven years, two Benzes. It was coming. Because he said it. And I didn't change because he said, he'll give it to me even if I'm living wrong. So I made little changes. I I don't have no honest people. I'm trying to get you blessed by the morning. I made... I said no a little more than I ever said yes. I, I went a little less than I did. Yes, sir. I got mad and used profanity a little less yes, sir. than y'all made me. Testify, Bishop. Oh, you know we got some cusses up in here. I just want you to know. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. You know, my gift can tell you the last time you sinned, too. But you said that's not prophecy, so I'm not doing it because I believed it. I did. One day the Lord came to me. My money started growing. I started being able to, like the text, purchase things, but I wasn't postured to get it even though I had what it took. So he gave me what I needed but left me in the place where it didn't work. I'm out. I had a house, no wife to live in it. I had two cars, but was on the road for 50 weeks. Couldn't enjoy nothing he gave me. He said, now Todd, he calls me Todd when he's rebuking me. He said, Todd. Do you want to enjoy it? And I quoted to him his own Bible. You come that I might have life. Y'all ain't ready. That I might have it. You said you do exceeding abundantly above all that I could ask or think. Why did you give it to me if you weren't going to let me enjoy it? The Lord said, well, now that you have it, I want to talk to you. Here's the last phase. And I'm going to see if any of y'all praise. Because some of you are going to miss it. And in the morning, you'll be the same. And in the morning, some of us will be way up here. You ready? He said, when you sin and mess up, don't expect me to get you. Talk to something I gave you because it's leaving. I said, what? Yes, sir. All right. We... Yes, sir. He said, I'm not going to take it out on you no more. Yes, sir. I'm going to take it from you. So when I looked at how much revenue I had then yeah. and my fetish arose word, Bishop. and God's word was fresh in my spirit, yes, sir. I then handled it like this. And I'm going to see who screams for me. Oh, I'm still not delivered, but I don't have to do it. No, no. Bishop. When you are not delivered and don't do it, you're responsible. You've made a mature decision. It was very clear, like you're talking to me. He says, when you sin and don't have to, talk to the money house of cars and ask them which one's leaving. 
So one day, I got ready to fall into sin while I was saved. I know y'all quiet. And we were chilling. And to me, it was worth the sin. Until my money said, this going to cost you this much. I said, oh, no, no. See, you're missing it. I'm delivered by default because my mature self is telling my irresponsible self, is this activity worth losing all this? I said, mm-mm. Now, this is what I'm saying to 200 of you who will jump five seconds and scream. God says, tell all of you, being that you want to see how good I am, I'm going to give you a chance to get everything you want, and when you sin, talk to it, I'm taking it. So some of you are going to wake up tomorrow and automatically be getting new doors, new opportunities, be excited, but when the temptation comes, God is not testing your season. He's testing your responsibility. So I've had people tell me, you know you want to do it. I'd be like, I do, but it costs too much. You know you want this. Yeah, but my house is a little prettier than your shape. I, you know you got to talk. So God's going to give y'all something strong enough to make you strong enough to think a little better. Now, in my hashiki telem, mokatahan shemahaya. Yes, Lord, I hear you. I'm on my way. Last but not least, and 1,000 of you, I'm speaking big numbers, 1,000 of you start screaming on this past five seconds. If it's not past five seconds, you've missed your season because you were irresponsible. Here's what God says. As of 7 a.m., I'm going to start readjusting your whole life. Hear me. No, 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 no. Get it all. That ain't worth screaming. That's good. He says, I'm going to start making so many adjustments that you're not going to know how your life got to where it is so quick. He says, and when the tempter old things come back to tempt you your words to them is go sit down somewhere go sit down and the way you gonna know you delivered it's gonna say you ain't never told me sit down before you ain't never treated me like that because i ain't never been who i am today go somewhere I want to be a very transparent man of God and tell some of you, I know what it is to struggle. I know what it is to be anointed and fall. I also know what it is in private to beat myself up. But at the end of the day, I will lift up my eye to the hill. I ain't going to cry up here. From whence cometh my help. Huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. My help. The Lord. So when people who are jealous of me that knows my past still say I'm still doing it. The reason why they say that is they've not been invited to sit down. In green pastures. Yes, sir. Folk are going to talk about you and not know where you live, not know your phone number. They know nothing about you except the last time they saw you, you were in the valley of the shadow of death. They're upset because they were not invited to the table. Yes, sir. Now, I want to help these millennials. Z's and alphas and my generation. Three of you will scream in my direction. If God's going to actually do this and he will, you must be strong enough to stop giving strength to people that don't matter. They got attention from your hurt you, your frustrated you. Don't let them get that same energy from the person who has succeeded. 
This is very uncouth of me, what I'm about to say. You can rebuke me. You can fix it. You can rebuke me. I am the eldest of nine, and I am the one born, same mother and father, out of wedlock. Back in that day, church was so holy that they were very blunt, and they, they didn't tell me, but they told my mother, you have a bastard child. They didn't mean cuss word, but out of wedlock, the Bible called you a bastard. Forty years after that, we had our first family reunion on that side of the family that told my mother, who's deceased, that I was the bastard child. They were right. We're sitting there. They bring up my mother. Oh, we miss her because she died very young. Todd, God is using you. And for some reason, I don't know why, I still remember that they called me a bastard. Now, see you. And I can't enjoy the family reunion because I can't believe they acting like. And you're only talking to me because I'm successful. And you need a loan. I don't care what folk call you that you used to be and probably are. The way you shut the enemy down is what I did to my family. I said, y'all are right. I was the bastard child, but I'm the most anointed bastard in this family. If you can't write your own narrative instead of letting somebody write your next chapter, you're wasting God's time. When you get it, it's not to go backwards to prove to who don't matter. That's right. It's to meet folk forward you've never seen before. That's good, My new company, I can't even tell you their names. Because we don't want our names mentioned. Where, Bishop? People were in your circle but was not in your corner. Oh. Oh. All right, I'm, I'm closing. Then I got some folk that pulled away from me. I can't be with you no more. That's a favor. Thank you. Right, right. Success don't hang out in groups. Now you that are listening think I'm boring you. I'm giving you the rules. That tomorrow when God is doing what he's doing, you got to be responsible enough to cut off who's necessary. And you don't have to tell them, just delete them out your phone. Don't remember the number. Use all of the money that you pay for the phone. Put them on the block list. Some of you that don't like people but kept their number, you're addicted. Every January, I delete any number I didn't call within that year. If I didn't call you in a year, that number don't have no power, so I just delete them. And when they call me, I'll be like, hello, who is this, man? You don't know it's me? No, I'm sorry, doc. Who is this? And then I reintroduce them to my new me. If you're calling for foolishness, doc, hang up. Don't let others get the jump on your season. That's good, Bishop. You waited too long. The Lord just rebuked me. I speak this over 12 people's lives. Look at me. We're about to play the piano softly, Mike, but here we go. He said, why you do all of that? prophesy and at least not tell them the real miracle of the story is not that I multiplied fish oh. prophet if it makes sense I saw you give just come high five my shoulder if it makes sense it is not that they picked up 12 it's full of fragments it's all right I'm used to it it's modern technology it's not that they picked up 12 baskets full of fragments yeah. The miracle is what we don't preach, and I'll see if 18 folks start clapping because it's you, is that the Lord kept the little. That's how it worked. You see, everybody else looked at what was in the basket, but what was in the basket was based upon what was in his hand, and what was in his hand was the little, and the Bible said, despise not the days. The reason why your stuff ran out is you took your eyes off of his hand and wanted what was in the basket. 
What's in the basket will leave. What's in his hand will stay forever. That's why we said little becomes much. Can I get some verbal talkers here? When you place it. James Cleveland's song, the lyric said, just like the little lad who gave Jesus all he had and the multitude was fed with the fish and the loaves of bread. But what you have may not seem much. But when you yield it to the touch of the master's loving hand, then you'll understand that your life will never be the same because we're just ordinary people. You ordinary people that's about to do extraordinary things, stand on your feet and look wealthy. You know what that looks like? Square your shoulders. Look like you got a chauffeur outside. Act like you got power to make a certain rest restaurant stay open just for you. I wonder if folk really got that kind of power. Yep. And you will also. Bishop, do you know the woman there with the red jacket? You know her? Who is she? Van Arsdale. No wonder I couldn't spell it. Um, is that your married name? So what's your maiden name? E-L-L-I-S? Okay, because that's better. How long you been married? Yeah, because the check God's given her is in the name of Ellis. No, no, don't clap. She needs to know what I'm talking about. You walked away from some money. Frustrated, though. If I'm done, I'm done. I don't care. God said, tell her, I can't let her get away and hold me the new money when she didn't take the old. I don't know, is that your husband? You don't mind her getting her old money, do you? Because you're looking like she don't need it. I'm here. That's how all of us black short men act. Even me. We be like, I got her. I'd rather have a woman with some money than a woman without. I'll tell you that too. I'll take care of her, but if I break down, I need her to be able to take care of me. Ain't no, ain't no. I ain't dying leaving my money for her to get married. No, no, I'm not doing that. God has 17 and a half years of money waiting on you. God also wants to reignite a business plan because during COVID, you could have done anything if you put your mind to it. Now, don't take this wrong and don't get mad at me and don't call me a false prophet and put it online. Because every now and then you do have an unusual attitude. Don't she, husband? Okay. <laughs> Confirm my prophecy, doc. No, no, she the best woman that you could ever have, though. She is. But the issue is this. When people like you who grew up in God bless never fully become the evangelist that they should have been, God penalizes them by slowing down their season. He didn't cancel it. Beginning tomorrow at 8.30, your season is going to reintroduce itself to you. I don't hear nobody and some wonderful things are about to transpire. Yeah, that's what he want. That person right there. That person is who he always had. Are y'all helping her or y'all just looking around? You don't have to believe this. You can even throw it away. It won't matter. But there is a $1 million grant through two people in here. One's going to join church. One's here. That's going to bring in a million dollars for the school. God says, I'm ready to fill the entire building. The marketplace will pay for the ministry. God said, tell my son, I'm retiring him from work, not from worship. Tell him 
I will pay him through the wealth of the wicked. And when the thief is caught, he must restore sevenfold. Every inch of this building is going to be making money. Every single inch of this building. God is sending one new member to get it fully going. When she comes, make sure the wrong person don't tell her you busy. Because your church that have positions have problems with power. Some think they're you, want to dress like you, be you, but they don't represent you. When you preach, everyone who serves you should be the loudest screamer, should be the best giver. They shouldn't be talking to people. Keep your eyes open. The Holy Ghost, and I'm honored to be given this word. The Holy Ghost said, tell him this. And 10 of you screamed, said, tell him, I've been keeping watch. I don't know what he means by this. I've known you. Said, tell him, when I release the million, I have 11 more because I'm going to bless him for 12 years. I'm going to bless him. Not the ministry. Him. I'm going to put him on a seven-figure salary for all of the hell that he's been through during his dry season. I love your house, but prepare to sell it soon. I love it. And you know I do. I've been there. God said, but tell him, wait till he see what I've got. And I don't know what he mean now. He said, tell him, I'm going to match the one he loved the most with the one he has now. I'm going to put both elements in one place. Now, with your money, you'll have to pay for the indoor pool on your own. All right, listen, we're about to go. Now, if you're jealous of a man's future, you are irresponsible in your present. You can't stop God. So you might as well be his friend and swim in the indoor pool if he lets you in. This ain't God, this me. I need some keys. Because if I keep letting them cry, I'm going to cry. Now, that's my man, so I'm not doing that. As you are standing, I must obey God. I heard you on yesterday, and I want you to hear me this time say that the budget of this meeting was $40,000 minimum. I heard you. I never heard you tell me that be before. But I remember when it was over $100,000 every year. I remember. Because you gave me some of it, I remember. I want you to do me a favor, and I want to say it in front of everybody. I can't tell you what to do because you're the senior brother. What I want you to do when I do this offering is anyone close to you that claim to have money and don't give, I want you to not let them close to you anymore. time out for hiring egos who come in here to basically live off of your members now they can look at me funny they ain't doing nothing to me cause they know I ain't that saved and one of them are still saying he talking about me you can tell me one on one homie because you got the right one tonight. I'm that God backwards. 
I'm that dog for real. The initial thing is, if they don't sacrificially give, they shouldn't be close to you. If they drive better than they give, if they dress better than they give, and they see that the ministry needs help, and they keep coming in here looking better than you, but never give, tell them, sit down somewhere. And tell any of the women or men who are drawn to them, sit down. Your church is about to get a new flock of sheep. He said, I have sheep that are not of this fold. God's going to give you people that don't know nothing about you except what they learn the day they come. And they will protect you and lay down in green pastures. Hopefully we can put a dent, Apostle Bennett, in this budget where you can get a jet so I don't have to fly on Southwest. It felt good because of who I was coming to. I really, to be honest, I didn't care. I used to ride my bike to revivals, not a motorcycle. 10-speed bike as a grown man. Hide it behind the church so they didn't know how I got there. I come from the bottom, Doc. I tried to ride a motorcycle last week. It just ain't going to work. <laughs> oh, no, I can ride, but the way these new folk drive texting in the car just makes me real nervous when I see people doing that. So certain things, I'm just going to give it over to Jesus. Every person 